So um, I had an entire episode as an intro to this here segment, but uh, this had to start because um, it is not a bullshit. And uh, that requires explaining. And uh, this is Siasa Incorrect, and we do just that. Explain Kenyan politics without the old serious undertones, because I mean, poly <laughs> we just do it. So now, the Communication Authority of Kenya, they are busy goofing off, and it doesn't look pretty. <sighs> so let's get into it. So, the authority has had a drive through telcos, that's uh, telecom companies, to have subscribers get this, re-register their SIM cards afresh in accordance to Registration of SIM Cards Regulation 2015, which requires all mobile service providers in the country to provide a CAK with an updated list of the details of their subscribers. Okay? Good. The key words to note there is the updated list of the details of their subscribers. Well, that means in every, in, in very direct, simple terms, is that telcos need only open their books for the communications authorities updating. Mm -hmm. So, if that's all Safaricom, Telcom, and Airtel need to do, why are they asking subscribers to re-register their information, or better yet, specifically, why is Safaricom on a huge drive to have subscribers re-register their numbers? Yeah, I smell a rat. So, here's another weird part. The registration is not the usual kind where one need only provide government-issued identification documentation, but more expansive to include one's photo and signature. Whoa, okay. As a Kenyan, if you're not worried about that private, if you're not worried about that a private company is boldly doing this, then uh, you need to question your, your mind and sanity. So, why? Why is Safaricom breaking the law and you're helping them do it? You know me, let's get quoting the Constitution. Article 31, Section C of the Kenyan Constitution 2010 states that, and I quote, Yeah, it's in the bloody Constitution. Every person has the right to privacy, which includes the right not to have, Section C, information relating to their family or private affairs, get this, unnecessarily required or revealed. End quote. So, the key words being <laughs> unnecessarily required. Okay, so here's where Safaricom is shooting itself in the foot. According to the Kenyan Information and Communications Act, Article 27A, Section 1 on the duties of telecommunication, uh, telecommunication operators, and of course, and I quote, before a telecommunications operator sells a SIM card or otherwise provides telecommunication services to a person, it shall obtain a from natural persons, the person's full name, identity card number, date of birth, gender, physical and postal address, end quote. Yeah, it is that elaborate. So, there is no requirement for collection of images or signatures. That's a fact. According to the Communications Authority, the move on SIM card registration was to weed out fictitious numbers used in perpetrating crimes, but this logic doesn't make sense with the implied re-registration drive telcos like Safaricom have had. Mm -hmm. So, why? According to former LSK Law Society of Kenya President, uh, uh, President Nelson Harvey's tweet, and I quote, SIM cards are registered upon purchase, period. I believe there is, I believe that is elementary. What then is the purpose of this other registration? To punguze ujinga serikalini tafadhali. Do not be compelled to comply with null and void directives. End quote. Mm -hmm. If SIM cards are registered upon purchase, then what is the need to register again? It, it's counterproductive. So I thought I hit uh, a dead end on my thinking until I came across uh, Ephraim Jenga's uh, fans tweet. And uh, let me quote you on this, uh -huh. why I will not register my SIM card. The SIM card re-registration is just another Huduma number nonsense. It is, the business, it is the business of telcos to register users. If there are any unregistered SIM cards active in the network, the CEOs should be arrested and prosecuted. That's what if it thinks, end quote. And uh, what is the point? Oh, well, I've presented all this information and we need to get to the point. The only identification documents users should provide are the IDs, passports, passports and or service cards where they may apply and nothing more. It states so in the bloody law. 
after some may feel that the images on the said documentation is updated. Yes, in most cases it is. But in all legality, however outdated it is, a private company cannot act like an arm of the government, bypass laws, legislative bodies, and the and the bloody constitution in a place and in place of them enforce its internal corporate policies as law. Yes, such acts of overreach is what we lawfully term as Siasa <laughs> incorrect. This video was produced using independent sources on research and analysis. And uh, no company paid a fee for a feature in this video. <laughs> also, no party was given an early preview or copy approval right. And uh, what that means is that they're seeing it for the first time alongside you.